Da Shi asserts that Yi Wenji has nothing to hide. She believes that the struggle is won. However, Da Shi is positive that Evans has been recording every conversation he has with the Santi. Wade claims that they require this knowledge, they need brains first, and they have four centuries to devise a plan. In summary, Da Shi says that they must find out what sort of stirrups the Santi are using. The hard disk is referred to the Da Shi as a hostage that they must free. However, there are 1,000 people on board the ship, including children. Wade lacks empathy. The grown-ups are described by him as traitors. Da Shi queries how they take out every person on board without erasing the data. According to him, special forces will likely buy enough time to delete the data while causing a carnage on both sides. The hard disk may be destroyed by a missile attack. Gas is unlikely to work well aboard ships because of its excellent ventilation. Then, Da Shi explains, JD merely reserved transportation via the Panama Canal for the upcoming month. Evans and Felix stroll the JD's deck while at sea. Felix claims that because some of their kin have been imprisoned, the people are concerned. They believe that the Lord was keeping an eye on them. Evans claims that God is keeping an eye on them. He goes on to say that if Santee had not wanted the raid to occur, it would not have. Evans heads back to his workspace. He tries to reach the Santee once more, but they say nothing. Evans is adamant that they never told their Lord lies. He implores the Lord to talk to them once again. Da Shi takes Orbi by surprise. But he brings Take out with him. Da Shi informs Orbi that he must return to work on the nanofibers if they are to extract the data from JD. Orbi is reluctant to do so because she fears that the countdown will resume. How would her nanofibers aid in obtaining the data, she queries. Da Shi advises her to simply have faith in him. Orbi and Da Shi arrive at the Center for Nanotechnology Research. Armed guards are keeping a close eye on everything. Cops, according to Orbi, won't assist in stopping the Santee. Orbi turns the program back on. The lab is back up and running. However, the countdown doesn't show up again this time. Though relieved, Orbi wonders why. Da Shi claims he believes the Lord has ceased to watch over his sheep. Wade speaks to a platoon of troops in a warehouse. They are the Royal Navy's best engineers, he claims. In a vehicle parked inside the warehouse are Orbi and Da Shi. Wade says they have to finish a particular project in less than a week. Wade claims that this week is the most significant of their lives. Orbi inquires as to whether Wade's choice of Jin's boyfriend is strange. Da Shi claims that Wade acts strangely in every way. Orbi queries Da Shi's lack of assistance. It's not his skill set, claims Da Shi. In another scene, Will Downing, Alex Sharp smokes while sitting next to the channel. Selwyn Pugh and Saul Durand, Joe Van Adepo accompany him. Pugh is in charge of managing the late Jack Rooney's assets. Will has inherited half of Jack's inheritance, which comes to around 20 million pounds, before taxes. Pugh walks away. Saul is asked whether he wants it by Will. According to Saul, Jack would have preferred that Will get cancer therapy. Wool, however, claims the disease has progressed too far and that he sought a second opinion. Wool claims that all he wants to do is make the most of these next few weeks. Under Varma's direction, military divers are working on the project at Culebra Cut, Panama. Orbi is here, too, working. Varma gives an engineer the task of making a pole appear older than it actually is. Wade walks up to him and tells him that Judgment Day is in 26 hours. How many are on board, Orbi asks. They are clueless. As necessary, the pilot is the only representative of the Panama Port Authority who is on board. Orbi queries whether the pilot may be warned. Wade queries her on the number of individuals who lost their lives while constructing the canal. Although exact numbers are unknown, estimates range from 5,000 to 20,000. Wade asks if building a canal or fighting against a planetary invasion is more crucial to civilization. Wade expresses his lack of faith in Orbi to Varma. Varma gets the order to double-check whatever she does. Later, Orbi is seated across from Varma in a bar. He is not drinking, but she is enjoying a beer. How many passengers are on board the ship, Orbi wonders. Varma claims he is unsure. Since Orbi claims to be a Navy person, he obviously knows something. It's an oil tanker that has been transformed, according to Varma, not a naval vessel. Automation tech, he argues, may refer to a small workforce. Wade informs Jin that the Santee wished to show us something in the Black Palace. 
It hasn't been seen by anyone yet, according to DA Shi. Jin queries whether this is a different gaming level. Wade acknowledges that it may be. They take a seat in front of two virtual reality helmets. Wade is cautioned by Jin to get ready for something very strange. Wade asserts that he will succeed. Jin claims the helmets will work for them if he's certain they want to show them something. Each of them don the helmets. They are still dressed the same and standing among the remains of a destroyed city. Wade queries how they are aware of their clothing. Wade, who is new to Three Body, is astounded by how realistic the simulation seems. As Jin starts to explore, she finds the AI Safon, Si Shimuka and her katana. Wade queries if the Santee resembles Safon. According to Safon, they don't, and mankind benefits from the look. Wade queries their true appearance. It wouldn't be to your taste, Safon says. Wade queries the reason of their arrival. To claim that their species is doomed, Safon says. She clarifies that this is because it will take the Santee fleet 400 years to arrive on Earth. Safon references the exponential advancements in human culture and technology. In comparison, it took the Santee a great deal longer to advance to the same level as humans. Jin surmises that this is due of Earth's eternal stable age, which frees advancement from the constraints of the Santee's cyclical civilizations. The 400 years will see more evolution of humans. This means that by the time the Santee reach Earth, humanity will possess the necessary technology to overcome them. Wade comes to the conclusion that in order to stop this, they have to figure out how to disarm people. According to Safon, Earth's science will perish due to the Santee. They'll use their softens to do this. She says that a proton transformed into a sentient computer is called a Safon. Jin objects, saying that such little computers are not conceivable to construct. There are more dimensions to the cosmos than just three, according to Safon. Hidden, means that these measurements are, folded up far too small for us to see. The Santee, however, have the capability to reveal these dimensions. They can unveil the upper dimensions of a proton by applying unfathomable amounts of energy to it. As a result, a tiny proton grows enormously. Wade and Jin observe Safon show the unfolding of a proton. It spreads to include the whole world. As Safon describes, inside the unfurled proton, they build a mind the size of a planet. The proton that has unfurled starts to shine like a vast circuit board. The Safon responds to Safon directly and uses her own voice. The Safon announces that it is ready to fold again, then folds again. The Safon retracts the sky circuits by folding itself back up. According to Safon, the Santi expended all of their resources to create two pairs of two Safons, or four total. Every pair has quantum entanglement. Two were transported to Earth, and the other two stayed with the Santi. The Santi based softens are instantly informed of all that the Earth based softens see. Protons don't have much mass, hence it is possible to accelerate the softens to almost the speed of light. It was months before the softens came to Earth. They were directed into particle accelerators, where they influenced and fabricated the outcomes of ongoing studies. As a result, scientists fear that the solutions to their inquiries will become chaotic and meaningless. A flashback of a confused Vera Yi and Saul appears on screen. According to Safon, the Sophons will provide wonders to humanity rather than the truth. We see the retinal countdowns and the flashing stars from Countdown. According to Safon, they are everywhere, always observing and discovering all of humanity's secrets. As the Safon soars into the Black Palace and into the room where Jin and Wade are sitting, we get to witness the Safon's point of view. Safon ends by saying that she will once more show them how to be afraid. Wade and Jin pull off their VR goggles. But the room's monitors quickly divert their attention. Augie notices that everyone in London seemed to be preoccupied. Glancing up, she notices that the displays the size of buildings are malfunctioning. Saul's screen gets vaulted while he watches nature shows while high. The identical message appears on each screen, you are bugs. Yi Wenji sells music playback equipment is part of this. The earth is encircled by a siphon that opens up, reflecting the planet's surface back into the sky. There's a huge eye in the mirror that seems like it can be seen by everyone on earth. Tatiana, Marlo Kelly glances up at the eye in another scene. <laughs>